We continue with our sporting conversations this morning. And next, we shall be talking about the major sporting events in the year 2022. And it's across different age groups there. Those for the seniors and also for the youth and in different environments that we can talk about. And to do that, we've got the National Olympic Committee of Kenya Secretary General Francis Mutuku. Francis, good to have you here in studio. And Francis Mutuku had been the acting Secretary General of the National Olympic Committee of Kenya before being elected substantively to that position. And Francis, as before I get <clears throat> into you know, the outlook for the new executive committee of the National Olympic Committee of Kenya. Something that I picked out from the annual general, the elective AGM that you had, was about the financial cleanup that had to happen in your, when, uh, over the past four years. You could just take us, give us a glimpse of that. Uh, thank you, and uh, good morning, and good morning uh, to, be, to the viewers. Uh, yes, uh, when we were there the previous term of 2017 to 2020, uh, as expected over very many years, uh, the National Olympic Committee had faced very many challenges. So one of the things which we put in place was a financial management structure. Uh, this was to review the revenue streams and more importantly the expenditures and those expenditures put in place, how they are going to be executed. Uh, through that program and through the very good work of our treasurer, Elliot Karioki, and the chairman of the finance committee, uh, Mr. Widaka Kioni, we were able to transform the financial aspect uh, where we have now an operational budget. We have operational, we have funds which can be able to execute our annual operations plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, I believe the finance committee was also able to uh, put uh, sufficient funds to be able to sustain the organization. Sustaining means by the time we come but to the end of the calendar year and we have other programs in the subsequent years then the finance committee is able to avail those funds which are available for those particular programs moving from a financial deficit now to a surplus what's been that transition and some of the controls that have come in place uh, the, the, the manual which was put in place uh, clearly outlined how the expenditure was to be carried out uh, the system of how each expenditure would be made from the user uh, application all the way to the finance committee sitting down and recommending to the executive and the executive uh, uh, approving the payment. Uh, just that transition of the process has helped put a lot of check in the system. And then the next thing which was required is that the finance committee expected uh, a lot of reports. Whatever, whatever program is carried out, the finance committee would be given. Mm -hmm. Through those small but very critical steps, then we were able to save a lot of what would have been uh, money slipping through without being accounted for or not being accounted for in the proper manner. And through all these programs, we've been able to say now, more people, have, uh, especially the International Olympic Committee through its solidarity program, uh, got confidence that we are making reports for all our programs and they were able now to start releasing more and more funds for our program. That's what is able to make us start this uh, next Olympiad very, very comfortably that we can run our programs at least for the next two to three years. Well, by the way, an, an Olympiad is a period by the time one Olympic en uh, Games ends until the other one, which means until Paris 2024. So we shall be getting back to that conversation, Francis. But right now, we take a sh short commercial break. When, when we get back, let us talk about the eight-point legacy plan that NOC has for the years 2022 to 2024 and also talk about the sporting events the africa youth games and the commonwealth games that knock will be overseeing for team kenya
And welcome back to Sports Check on this Monday morning. It is the 10th day of January 2022. It's the first edition of the program this year. And we're having conversations about a busy sporting year. And in studio with us is the Secretary General of the National Olympic Committee of Kenya, Francis Mutuku. And as we get into these, are, there has been a change at the sign language interpretation box. And right now we've got Lensa Odingo. She's at the bottom right of your screen. We've heard about the changes in fiscal management at the National Olympic Committee of Kenya. And the newly elected board has got an eight-point plan that they would like to see working towards Kenya having a better sporting culture and also enhancing what is known as the Olympic values. And Francis, let me just get to the first one. And you speak about it because when people hear knock, they see the Olympic Games or the Commonwealth, uh, mainly the Olympic Games, is elite athlete development. How do you want to achieve this? Uh, yes, uh, that's probably the most important because the National Olympic Committee, and I have to keep repeating the Commonwealth Games uh, Federation yeah. because of this year, mm -hmm. uh, is charged with putting together teams uh, for both the Olympic, uh, both the uh, Summer Olympics, Winter Olympics, and the Youth Olympics. And secondly, the Commonwealth Games. Commonwealth Games also at the top level and the uh, Commonwealth Youth Games. And therefore, the very best, the very best of each of our disciplines, mm -hmm. those are the people we call the elite. Uh, they might not be under an elite program right now, but our thinking and our program is that we should put all our top athletes in an elite program. Elite program can start from just an attitude uh, where we say right now we are looking at 2024 and we started putting the team which will represent us in 2024 as they start a program or do we need to put a large physical structure mm -hmm. uh, so that these athletes can start being trained. That is first the attitude program. The second one is actual programs getting our national coaches within each respective federation start working with these athletes on a long-term project. Uh, for Tokyo we try to have at least a six months training program but now we are saying for Paris 2024 the, start, the training should have started immediately after the Olympics. So we are a few months late. However, we can catch up. We can catch up by uh, within January and February getting all our federation start earmarking who are the teams which are going to represent us in Paris, and we start putting them in programs from now. Now, this, I would like to combine some, I think, point number two, and then combine also together with point number eight. There is the Athletes Welfare Program, and for point number eight, I want to put it uh, as recognition and reward. Tell us about these two. Uh, f f first, once we sort out the elite uh, aspect of athletes, we know everybody also is participating in sports is an athlete. And um, what we've learned in the previous four years is that there's a lot of education outside the pitch which needs to be uh, promoted. Uh, and therefore, we are looking at welfare in terms of first education. Uh, we want all our things to be given opportunities to build their characters, to build their knowledge, to build... Um, to become people who can be presented to different corporates to be employed mm -hmm. or to just be good citizens so, so they can set an example because they are role models of thousands of youngsters across the country. Uh, wh when we look at uh, recognition, recognition goes beyond the athletes. We have a lot of people and I'm glad that uh, the, one of your guests today was somebody who has been recognized worldwide in, yeah, terms, of what, yeah, in terms of what she's doing. Those are the steps you want to follow. That there are so no, many actually, she's going to be looking at your athletes in Birmingham. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, and you see, like she said, she needs to encourage a lot of uh, youngsters. Now, these are some of the people who have quietly, in the back room, done great work for both the Olympic and the Commonwealth movement. And we do not want that good work to go unrecognized. We want every year after every major championship to be looking back over the period and seeing who are some of these Kenyans who have really stood out in terms of different areas. And it's not really at the pitch. Mm -hmm. It's within the pitch, like we did after Tokyo, where we gave the medalist awards. But now, going forward, we'll be going beyond the medals. Who are some of the people? There are coaches who have done great work. There are great administrators. There are great people who have supported us in terms of corporate sponsorship, in terms of education. So the recognition is just to look back and say, we see you, we are happy about you, keep doing the good job. Now, you mentioned about education. 
tell us how you want to put this on education and research. We know a lot um, global sport has become, how would I call it, it's now a science. Sport is purely now viewed from not just the artistic and the beauty of it, but from the scientific point of view. What's the approach on this? Uh, uh, previously, we had what we, had, we call the Olympic Academy, mm -hmm. which was just charged with running the Olympic education program. We've ele elevated our education aspect to an institute. We've created the National Olympic Committee Institute. And in February, we'll be announcing who the chairman, who the director, and who the faculty of that particular institute will be. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is to say that uh, within the sports uh, infrastructure, there are a lot of opportunities for education. One of the things we are saying is that when you meet an average athlete, they tell you that they are striving to get a scholarship to the UK, to Australia, to the US. And we want to change that conversation where we engage our local universities to be able to ask them, can you avail scholarship for our sports people in Kenya? Out of the very many universities in the country, if each of them was to give 20, 25 scholarship athletes, we we'll would know that we've, been take, we've taken care of. What will be the impact of this, apart from educating, we also believe that the Kenya University Sports Association Games will now be at a top level because they have gotten a lot of the top athletes. But most importantly, to be able to give our athletes a pathway program from primary, secondary, college, or university, all the way. That is the education we are talking about. Uh, the second thing is that there are a lot of Olympic value uh, education which we need to impart. Uh, values of the Olympic is respect, friendship, and excellence. Mm -hmm. These are values we'd wish to see as many people as possible start living them. We say Olympicism is a way of life. So we are saying we want to partnership with the Ministry of Education so that we can be able to see can we educate people be just before all the Kenya primary schools uh, sports games or before the Kenya secondary schools sports games to just teach them of these values which all of us as citizens of Kenya will be proud if we see our youngsters leaving them out. Now, and it, I'd like to bring in something else here. Um, I think was it last year a golf administrator got a scholarship to go study through the sport, uh, you know, to, uh, on sports management. How then do you get more people to understand the way sport is run nowadays? Uh, uh, a lot of, we planned, uh, and we are very clear in terms of our target, that all the presidents, secretary generals, and treasurers of all our sports federation will go through continuous training of the sports administrators. We are also saying we are going below the top level, because at the top level, we are saying everyone, anyone serving within the executive committees will be able to give them that opportunities. And for now, some few federations are able to afford to employ uh, some members of the staff. Again, through the NOC Institute, we'll be able to avail education program. And education, we say it's not a one-off. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is to make it continuous. Like we all know, we, we are taught, but you need to keep going for refresher courses now and then. So we are saying to improve, to change our administration of sports, we need to have programs running, not only at the national level of our federation, but also at the county, at the sub-county level. We believe within the next uh, four years, uh, within this Olympiad, we are able to reach administrators up to the county level, and that will be a transformation. Now, there are some individuals, like the one you mentioned, uh, the one who was serving at the Kenya Golf Union. There are some individuals who have been extremely good, who are very well educated. So if we can be able to get their scholarships or opportunities for further studies, mm -hmm. then they'll be able to benefit from those programs. Ah, and we wish him well. I th he's in South Korea at the moment. Correct, yeah. yes. So the other one that I would like to bring out, because you've mentioned the uh, top three people, uh, the pre Federation President, Secretary General, Treasurer, or somebody else in case federations don't have treasurer somebody else from that executive committee it's about governance what are the things that you want to bring out and from the experiences of trying to turn knock around uh, the first one is uh, we are looking in terms of just the constitution of our membership we've had two elections where there have been issues in regard to the registration of federation and number two the officials of the federation we want to make that a thing of the past uh, we've committed 
to work very closely with the Ministry of Sports through the Registrar of Sports so that we look at every federation and support them in whatever they need to put mm -hmm. in place for registration purposes. We know some of it may not be overnight, it takes time, but we want to be on that road to start having our federations comply to the extent possible with the, uh, with the sports uh, with, with the sports act number two is obviously within the governance structure of our federations we've already said in terms of the education program and at a national level of the national olympic committee is frequent consultative forums in which we are able to get feedback from the federation on what challenges or what opportunities they feel we can be able to take advantage of once we do that we believe slowly and slowly we'll carry all our members along in terms of the governance there's a big question which a lot of people have been asking in terms of the gender uh, the gender aspect mm -hmm. why only few people were were elected within the executive uh, ab and um, first it's an education issue to know that a lot of people who make it to the national olympic committee executive primarily come from the top level of federations within most federations you'll find that right now there are only two presidents uh, netball and cricket who are women all there are others are dominated by men uh, there are very few women within the executive committees of the different federations uh, we are working right now to revise our constitution so that we allow for co-option of uh, uh, people who are of the minority gender so that we can have at least a 30 percent and then we'll be encouraging mm -hmm. our federations to do it that's a short-term uh, strategy the long term is to start giving our women opportunities there are a lot of women practicing sports we want to give them opportunities to train them in the previous olympiad we tried to have several uh, women's uh, courses for administrators but now we are going to increase them so that we can be able to facilitate to empower and to give opportunity to as many women as possible to start being actively involved in the administration of sports. Well, you've brought in that Jenna Pillar that I wanted to bring in, which is number five. Now, now that one I want to put in um, a shift or uh, to technical support for affiliates. Explain about this. Uh, the, the, all our federations have a lot of challenges. The biggest challenge, uh, besides financial, uh, is equipment. Uh, Every federation will give you a story of how they were given equipment by the International Federation and when it reached Kenya they could not afford the duty or the clearance cost. So to support our federations in, support, in terms of that, first we put an amount available. The, a federation can be able to draw up to 150,000 of clearing uh, costs. Uh, but again, we found that's not sufficient. Sometimes the equipment and what the customs require is much more. So this, might, uh, this we want to take the route of uh, legislation uh, to be able to appeal to our Ministry of Sports, uh, to appeal to our Parliamentary Committee on Sports to be able to look into these aspects of equipment. How our federations can be able to get equipment at a very at, a, at almost uh, no uh, basically cost. a tax waivers pro, i mean the sports act provides ways for getting tax waivers e exactly because just that one action will transform our sports from one level to another level because our lot of our sports people do not have the equipment that is one of the areas we want to ensure there is a lot of support uh, the second one is obviously a lot of uh, close collaboration with the Ministry of Sports. We believe as an umbrella body, we can play a very critical role of uh, bridging the gap between federations, Ministry of Sports, and other entities which are involved in a day-to-day -day administration of sports, so that our federations can continually get support. I want to bring in uh, two, and I want to tie them together. One, Kenya being a host country for events, and also at the same time, you are, there is lands the eastern end of nairobi that are uh, not got and your and the center is being put up tell us about that because there is different ways about the olympics uh, you can host teams you can host meetings and or even some minor events uh, the thinking uh, around the olympia africa center was one currently the way our infrastructure is in terms of sports is that very few federations are able to run youth development programs and we say this might be a very good solution to a lot of our federation by having an olympic africa center which 
constitutes almost 20 to 20 different uh, sports disciplines. Uh, if we are able to get the very best of the Kenyan youth come to that place to train, they'll be able to get resources which are limited. They'll be able to get resources shared. For example, if you have a multidisciplinary place where a lot of the martial arts can be practiced. It means that uh, with just that one cost of putting that center, then you're able to cater to around six different martial arts. But more importantly, beyond the coaches, if you want to have a technical support team, for example, if you want to have a strength and conditioning expert, he'll be able to cater for very many disciplines at the same time at a much lower cost than if the, each federation was able to do it. But more importantly, we are saying if we are going to transform the performance of Kenya internationally, we have to start at the youth. And our turning point will be Dakar 2026. That's our aim, that we prepare so many youth in so many different sports that from 2026 onwards we start a generation of youngsters who are very good in all kinds of sports. Kenya hosting events, what's the whole story here? We've looked at it, we've looked at the example of our, uh, our affiliates, probably I think one of our top leading affiliates in terms of Austin is Athletics Kenya. Uh, we also saw that... Um, Athletics Kenya hosted an event very, very successful and they have been doing it consistently. Uh, through that, whenever you host an event, you get a lot of financial input. Uh -huh. uh, you get a lot of infrastructure development. If you just look at what the transformation at Nyayo and Kasarani, simply because of hosting of the events, so that's one of the objectives. We want different federations to host different events so that the infrastructure can be uplifted. Now, you mentioned 2026, and we've got the African Youth Games in Egypt. Um, I mean, Lesotho and Ethiopia coming, uh, coming in and redrawing eventually. Everyone settled about this. Talk to us about the games for the youth. I think the last time was in Algeria, before that was in Botswana. What is not doing as you prepare the youngsters for Cairo? The first one will be to go back to what we had started. Uh, we had started the youth camps. Uh, you remember we had the first one in Lukenya where we brought uh, about 20 different disciplines yes. to be trained. Unfortunately, because of the COVID uh, pandemic. January, February 2019. Yes. And then the, the ones we had scheduled, uh, we scheduled them in 2020. Unfortunately, we could not go on with that program. Uh, so this year, we are we're going back to the youth camps. Mm -hmm. uh, first, to prepare on a short-term basis for the African Youth Games. We are very happy that uh, the African Youth Games are taking place because you were worried because the first one Lesotho uh, for different reasons were not able to do it then secondly Ethiopia because of the challenges they have been uh, again no one was very comfortable with going to the other but we are happy that Egypt has taken up that that gives us a clear roadmap for us to start developing our youth some of these youth will be looking forward to once they perform very well we have African Games next year we have the Paris 2024 for, but most importantly for the youth is the Dakar 2026. Can we get a team which can start training now, participating with an aim to go for Dakar 2026 and ultimately uh, for Brisbane 2032 Olympic Games. So the youth gives us an opportunity to start looking at our sports in a long-term perspective, which is the attitude change we want to bring in this time round. The disciplines. Let's uh, off the top. I mean, let's start very simple. I can mention athletics. Do we ha uh, I know the last time we picked up a medal in golf um, at the youth games. I think that was Botswana. What are the, what should we? Which youngsters should we be looking out for? Um, because of the last two years, lack of engagement within the youth. I think now across the world it's an open forum. And therefore, it means within Kenya, it's very open. We've seen some youngsters do very, very well in the individual sports. Mm -hmm. And we like to believe if they're put in a program and they start preparing now and they're given the sufficient exposure between now and August, we can get very, very good surprises. And that's what we are looking for. Because those are the youth who we believe can be able to do well for us, uh, win for us medals. But at that level, we are also very strong on exposure, that we want our youth to be exposed. But we're also saying, let's not wait until August. Okay. One of our wishes, and this goes for both for the youth games and the Commonwealth, we do not want a Kenyan, their first in international march is at the commonwealth we are hoping that through the support of the ministry of sports we can be able to get some of our sports people get exposure opportunities international between now and then if they can go to two or three competitions or some 
uh, teams come and compete with them here, yeah, that would be good. That way at least they'll have gotten exposure before they go for the top competition. All right, so we shall know the, dis uh, the disciplines in due course. Yes, we will. Now, uh, the Commonwealth Games taking place six months from now, and we know Rugby Sevens have qualified, basketball three by three, they've qualified the men and the women, and the women's cricket team um, out to Malaysia for qualification. Uh, the, tell us where the plans are, the preparations, and some of the announcements that may be made in due course. Uh, right now, as we speak, we have our cricket team, uh, the women team, living uh, today. Part of the team will leave today and the rest will leave tomorrow. Obviously, because of the times we are living in, there are a lot of challenges with travel. Mm -hmm. We were hoping they would leave much earlier, but because of those challenges, they were not able to, so they're leaving today and tomorrow. Uh, we, we hope they can do well and qualify. The second team, which will be going uh, towards the, from the 19th, will be our two teams of Kenya Hockey both the women's and the men's team, they'll be going to Ghana for their qualification matches. Those are the immediate uh, teams which we are hoping can be able to. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, we have uh, Kenya rugby men's and uh, uh, basketball three by three, both men and women which have qualified. We are hoping that the women's uh, uh, rugby team can be able to qualify. They were in it in Gold Coast in 2018 and we believe mm -hmm. uh, that they'll be able to put a good performance and travel. So, so there are very many teams which need to go for qualification. There are some who have gotten direct qualification. A lot of the individual sports have gotten direct uh, um, qualification. The others have to fight their way between now uh, within the next six months. What we are looking forward to, we have uh, an engagement with the Ministry of Sports. We are hoping that the steering committee and the central management committee can be formed between January and February. The National Olympic Committee will be announcing who the chef, uh, the mission will be, mm -hmm. and the the team which will be running uh, probably within the next, uh, in less than 14 days. Uh, we are hoping that this week we can be able to meet our federations, give them the roadmap. Then they can also give us the feedback of the interactions with the international federations on what program they need to. But most importantly, we are saying the teams must start training right now. And what's from the Commonwealth Games Federation that's been passed on to NOC as you prepare for the games? Uh, you know, Tokyo, there was what was known as the handbook of the games, including one around, you know, the coronavirus protocols. What come f from Birmingham? Same. It will be the same, which is, uh, I believe, a lot of uh, bodies have adopted that, the playbook. Uh, I believe right now they are revising their latest playbook uh -huh. to be able to give us, maybe by March. Uh, end of this uh, month, there will be the first uh, shaved emissions meeting where a lot of the information will come from. But as you mentioned, COVID will be the most important aspect, which means then even our medical teams have to work a lot with the other teams to be able to prepare them. For Birmingham, there will be three different venues, major venues, so it means our teams will be split into three different areas to compete. It also means as we constitute our management, then that will be part of the areas we'll be looking at. As you all know, the Commonwealth... Um, Are the three venues just mentioned for our viewers? Uh, I'll need to check that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I know, know there's the main... Um, yes, which is Birmingham. Which is, I know where there is the Athletics Arena. Yes, at the mm -hmm. university. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have two others. The second thing which is important for our viewers to know is that um, the parasports... Uh, will be under our, our management so one of the people will be incorporating the team uh, aspects is somebody who is conversant and who can manage our para sports. Ah, from the National Paralympic, uh, from, Paralympic the national, from the National Paralympic Committee. Uh, we hope that they can be able to get as many many uh, para uh, sports people uh, to qualify uh, but just like at some of the team sports, they have to go for a lot of competitions to be able to qualify for the Commonwealth. None of them has a direct qualification so all of them have to work through. Mm -hmm. All right, so Francis Motuku, the Secretary General of the National Olympic Committee of Kenya. I know there is something, but at your own request, I won't be touching it. And um, hold on for it. Um, and this will be coming later in our bulletin, so I'll let Francis, I'll let that one pass. But overall, for the outlook for 2022, what do you see? What is the uh, communication coming in from the federations, the athletes, and also from within the NOC executive? One of the things we know that 2022 is a very critical year for the country. However, we would like to keep our sports people 
to keep within the sports focus so that they can be able to participate. Our federations, we saw a lot of support uh, with our federations. We will continue engaging them continuously because there's a lot of emotion which comes through us. Our athletes remain the center of all our programs. Every day we wake up to serve the athletes. So athletes should look at, um, expect, expect from us programs which will not only help them within the pitch but off the pitch. Our technical officials, our coaches, what we are saying is we want to give them as many opportunities as possible. So if federations decide they are sending any team for a competition we hope that they'll be sending the best coaches we also want to organize like we did in the last period what we had was a sports science uh, symposium for our coaches we hope that we can be able to incorporate this actually from a technical level we want our technical people to start knowing sports has changed so we want to change with the times well, and you know, sport has changed the time. At one point, I know a former international once told me they went for a games when somebody lost a race, they said, to Takula Ugali. I'm sure. <laughs> um, I'm sure that Jeffrey Kemani would, would, la would want to know who said that. <laughs> But thank you very much, Francis. We hope to see the team's qualification and also get updates on what's happening. Remember, from the 18th of January, we're going to be having the women's cricket team playing in Malaysia. And yeah. also around the same day, incidentally, the Correct. men's and women's hockey teams, that's from the 19th. Correct, yes. They will in be Ghana. playing in Ghana. So qualification for the Commonwealth Games starts now. And for athletics, you have to wait for the trials. You already have... A whole yes. list, of, but you need to cut down it's the numbers. It's more cutting down to fit. To there are too many. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you've had it from him, and let's see how soon can we get that done. Francis Mutuku, Secretary General of NOC, thank you very much. And um, you know, I'll be waiting for that little piece of information later yes. today. And thank you very much. It's always a pleasure sharing our information with our viewers. Thank uh, you. Welcome.